This is the second of two videos showing the development of this particular etching in hard and soft ground etching. Uh, you can see there where the plate was left from the first video and now we're going to develop it with both hard and soft ground etching. So this fabric I'm actually turning slightly. There's soft ground already on the plate. That fabric is at a different direction from what the original soft ground impression uh, was in the plate before. I've stopped out the area where the teeth are and then I'm putting this in the acid for five minutes. Um, I'm also marking this line where I want to um, cut the plate later on. I've put hard ground on that one end of the plate but uh, none of the rest of that is actually going to be biting through except where I make that line. It's just going to be a guide for me. After I clean the plate off I put more soft ground on top of it and what you'll see here uh, is that I moved the fabric multiple times as I ran it through the press at different times. That's another way to get a different kind of texture onto the plate. Um, then I put some stop out on it and um, I ran that into the bath for another five minutes and now I'm doing the second test of the image and so I'm inking it up the same way that we inked it before using some tarlatan that already has a little bit of ink in it. Notice I'm not inking the top part because I don't really need to have that print well. And then some cleaner tarlatan, wiping it off and finishing it off with some newspaper before I print it. And here is what we have in the second state of the print. So with there still being some ink left in the plate, I am going to make some changes by using the scraper and the burnisher. The ink staying in the plate, actually the oil acts as a little bit of a lubricant and makes it easier to do some of that scraping and burnishing. So I keep the picture right there with me um, that I'm working from and the last test print uh, so I can see what areas need to be lightened up. Um, I keep overprinting the same areas because I will get less of a pronounced texture from the fabric with them. Now I'm going to cut the excess off of the plate using this instrument that is called the draw tool. It makes a horrible sound as you're doing this, but you have to go by that line that we um, put in there first through the hard ground etching um, and use a straight edge and some clamps to get that uh, straight edge to stay in place. You take quite a bit of material out of that and then you just have to do it by hand. You keep bending it up and down across a straight uh, table that has a really straight edge there and eventually it loosens up and breaks off. You will then need to go back in with your scraper and uh, redo the bevel in that area because um, it's very rough here. Uh, the scraper probably won't work completely for you and you'll have to move to using a file. So next I put more soft ground on the plate and here I am basically drawing back onto the plate. I've done that once before um, and doing kind of a pencil line of the image and uh, I put that into the acid for uh, 10 minutes. I did not clean the plate off actually and I didn't have anything stopped out at that point. So I am re-soft grounding the plate, putting a texture on that, uh, a fabric texture on that after I'm done doing that and I'll put that in for a minute. Then I, after that I put some stop out on it um, and then put it back in for another two minutes and then I would stop it out again and um, you'll actually be able to see that uh, in some of the areas where the hard ground is on there I decided that I wanted to make it darker with some hard ground lines so after that stop out is completely dry I went back into it and scraped some more lines into it. I did this all without cleaning the plate in between because it was simpler and took less time um, I could just kind of keep going one on top of the other. After that, I totally cleaned the plate, took another proof of it, and decided I needed to add more soft ground to it, so I put a texture on there. I put it in the acid three different times with different stop outs in between for a total of 16 minutes. Then I covered the whole thing in the hard ground and scratched some areas in uh, for a total of 30 minutes for those areas, and then I took this proof. 
Again, with ink still in the plate, I went back in and decided to do some scraping and burnishing. Of course, I have the most recent proof there. Sometimes I keep several proofs out at the same time, and I'm working off of the the photograph that I'm working from over on the right. You can also see written all over that is my notes about what I'm doing each time. That's actually how I could go back and describe the changes that I'm making. This um, sometimes gets quite a bit darker than what I want it to be, uh, and then I have to go through and scrape quite a bit off. Once again, I'm doing another pencil line on here. Um, I put that in for 15 minutes, and then after that was in, I re-soft ground the plate, put a, a fabric texture, put that in for two minutes, stop it out, put it in for 12, and then did some hard ground lines for 45 minutes. As I get closer to the end, um, there might still be quite a bit of work to do, uh, but it's actually much more subtle, the changes that I'm making. And it looks like I'm going over the same areas quite often, but because I'm closer to the end right now, I actually am re-scraping and then using the burnisher too on the bevels. You want your bevels to be very clean and as you, and there's the file that I'm using on it as well, you want the bevels to be completely smooth because you don't want to pick up any ink when you are printing. Uh, you want it to be completely white around the bevels. When you are placing the plate in and out of the acid a bunch of different times, uh, you are likely to scratch through that surface at some point and you'll just get lines in there. So we clean it up close to the end so that we end up with a very nice uh, clean border around the outside of the image. So. Yes, I am doing uh, much more subtle changes here. It's because I keep uh, biting into the plate with soft ground over and over. Usually I'm only going by maybe two to three and a half, maybe five minutes as, at the most. Uh, as I bite back over and over and over again the same textures, um, different textures but over the same areas, as I keep scraping and burnishing those down, I get much more like a pencil drawing uh, on there instead of more like a pen and ink drawing that you would see with with the hard ground. So I really use soft ground to my advantage to get nice soft transitions and um, as the burnisher actually works very well to get those soft transitions too. Um, so I don't do very much time when I'm using the soft ground like that but I do as I'm deepening up some of the really dark areas of the hard ground. So those could go in for 15, 20, sometimes 45 or 60 minutes for some of those areas and then they get really rich and dark. So here are some of the options that you have for completing an etching in both soft and hard ground etching.